Hello, uh, you are welcome to uh, clip two of part one in the course of uh, uh, modern wireless communication uh, systems and applications. Um, in the uh, clip one, we just mentioned uh, some um, fundamental or some concepts uh, about uh, signals in, in time and in frequency and the relation between them. And uh, here we start with Fourier transform. I just wanted to mention that uh, some student uh, wants to know more about uh, complex numbers because um, it seems that they forgot uh, uh, many things or many important things about these complex numbers. Uh, although that this course is not a mathematical based course, so we don't we, we will not use a lot of math in this course. Actually, it is light course in terms of mathematics. However, I will make small clips about uh, some math that we will face in this uh, in this course. So I will uh, record like uh, you will find them. Uh, in in the uh, playlist, you will find some uh, like uh, small clips about uh, complex numbers and um, the concepts, um, physical concepts of complex numbers and what they what and what they mean and uh, um, why uh, they are very useful in in, in many branches of uh, of engineering. Yeah. So uh, now this is Fourier transform. Fourier transform is the mathematical basis to convert or to transform from time domain to frequency domain. As we mentioned in clip one, that it is important to see the frequency contents of the signal. So it is very important to know how is the frequency, the frequency or the power of the, of, of the frequency is distributed over the frequency, the power of the signal, how it is distributed over the frequencies uh, or, or over the spectrum. This is very important because based on that, we can design uh, uh, the transmitter, the receiver. We, we know what, what, what are the requirements to, uh, to make a communication link. So uh, the transform process is called Fourier transform, and you can see this. This is in the first function, as you can see it here, that uh, s of f is equal to the integration from minus infinity up to infinity. S of t is the signal in time domain multiplied by exponent of minus j2 by ft dt. So you can see that we make the integration over all time from minus infinity up to infinity and we mentioned about this in clip one that the frequencies is representing the the whole time uh, horizon of of the signal and also the, the the reverse process is called the inverse Fourier transform and it can be done as it is shown in this in in this equation okay um now if we ask uh, a question that uh, uh, if you have such circuit here so we have battery with certain voltage and we have some load it can be represented for example as a, a resistance or a resistor so and you switch on this uh, 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 switch which means that you close the circuit so we have current will will move in this circuit for certain time and we make this time like two tau and then we switch it on uh, off again so you you make switch it on and off so it is like making one pulse as it is shown here so it, it started we assumed symmetric and we assume that we start of course there is no negative time just for math uh, manipulations that we will use it so we were uh, it, it it can be of course also from zero to to tau or, or to two tau it, it doesn't matter so now we have from minus tau up to tau Okay, so we have some voltage drop here for A. Now you can see that this is quite understandable. So we know that this is the, that the time domain pulse. But how this time domain uh, uh, will be uh, in any frequency domain? Can you see any frequencies here? It is not possible to see frequencies here. So what is the frequency content? Okay, if... Uh, uh, one of you asked why we need to know the frequencies. Good question. Actually, we need to know the, the, the frequencies here if we want to transmit this pulse over a certain channel from the transmitter till the receiver and we want to keep as much as possible the shape of this signal. We need to know 
the frequency that the signal will cover in order to prepare our uh, communication system to carry this frequency band or the bandwidth. For example, if the bandwidth for this signal is uh, 20, for example, 25 hertz or it is 25 kilohertz, it is different. If it is 25 kilohertz, then you need to have the transmitter and the filters in the transmitter and the filters in the receiver. And you need to know that the channel, uh, um, uh, 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 like uh, characteristics, is uh, enough to transmit this signal. So it is important to know the frequency content of the signal, of any signal. However, as I said, this is in time domain, it is hard to know the frequencies content of the signal directly from its shape in time. But by making, I will not go, as I said, through the math detailed mathematics, but I am sure that many of you maybe studied this before, so they know how to make the calculations. It is, it is very easy, actually. It is only one step to find the result. So finding the the the, uh, the frequency content, it will be what is known as sync function. The sync is sine over uh, two by f tau over uh, by by f, as it is defined here, as you can see it. Okay, and now when when you draw this frequency content, you will find that it will be like it is called sync function in this in this shape. So you can see that most of the most of the uh, energy of this signal in the frequency domain is like uh, within the first loop. This is the first loop. If we assume this is the first loop, for example, so you can see that um, like most of the signal is uh, concentrated in this first loop on the frequency domain, which is from from one over two tau. I don't know if if you can read it or not, but you can read it at least from the slides. So it is one over two tau and from minus one over two tau. What it means? It means that, for example, if tau, let's say tau equal to uh, one millisecond, so it is one over two tau, it means that uh, 500 hertz. So the main loop, it will have, it will be like uh, between, between minus 500 hertz to 500 hertz. Okay, what if we make our communication system is enough to send only the first loop, not the whole signal. Of course, this will make some distortion of the, of the uh, received signal. So uh, in the received signal, it will not be like in the shape, like exactly like, like this one, but it can be just for example, just an example, it might be something like that, for example. So instead of having these edges, that we will not have them. Okay, how can we increase the, the accuracy of the transmission? Then you need, of course, to send, to take more frequencies. You need to take more frequencies uh, range in order to have more and more accurate reception of the same signal. Of course, just uh, to mention that the signal, which has like like uh, ideal pulse, is not exist uh, already. I mean, it is not possible to generate such signal. The signals usually it has some rise time uh, anyhow. But now we are talking just theoretically. Okay. So uh, uh, in order to have exactly the same pulse, we need to have infinity frequency domain about infinity because this will continue up to infinity frequency. Okay, so in order to have the to preserve the original pulse exactly hundred percent as it is, we will need infinity bandwidth. Of course, it is not possible to have infinity bandwidth. Okay, and also uh, I need to mention here one important uh, uh, behavior that when you have signal which is like uh, hardly terminated in time, like this one, so it, it is sharply terminated in time, it will be infinity in frequency, and the converse is true. For example, if you have signal which is uh, uh, limited in frequency, it will have infinity like duration in time. Uh, those things are very important in digital communication, but we will come many times later to this when we talk about intersymbol interference of the problems of digital communication, we will come later about these problems. Okay? Let us continue. Yes, we have. 
Okay, uh, I just here put some uh, uh, code, small code, to calculate this, to make the calculation or to sim simulate this um, uh, Fourier transform uh, by using MATLAB or you can use Octave uh, with the same code, but let us skip this one. Okay, time uh, frequency resolution, or it is known also as time frequency uncertainty principle, it is quite equivalent or similar to, to what is known as uh, uh, uncertainty principle in quantum mechanics, where it says that it is not possible to 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 uh, uh, um, to find uh, the momentum of very small particle like electron it is momentum and it is location in the same time with 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 uh, uh, like uh, um, infinity accuracy or with 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 high very high accuracy so there is a limitation about this so it is it is quite similar here also frequency and time it has similar like um, behavior for example uh, this is uh, uh, the signal of my voice that i mentioned in uh, previous clip so if i zoom it make zoom and now if i take any point here in 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 time so this is one point in time and i asked you what is the frequency of this point this question is meaningless actually this question is meaningless because it is a point in time we don't know it is a frequency because the frequency is related to the rate of changes of the signal in time okay so uh, uh, once if we want to have like more accurate uh, estimation of the frequency we need to take some window of in time so as we increase the window of time then we can have more accurate uh, 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 like estimation or uh, uh, about the frequency content in that in that signal of course also here it has some limitations and it has also some problems we will talk about them when we talk about spectrum uh, estimation uh, in in cognitive radius uh, um, uh, later maybe i think in in part eight of this course okay uh, now uh, if we go back uh, you can see that uh, uh, we mentioned that we can calculate uh, or compute the, the, the frequency content of any signal by using this integration this complex integration but here we assume that we know S of t, for example, S of t, as in this example, in the previous example, it was pulse, for example, or it can be maybe something like that, or anything. So once you know the shape of the signal in time domain, it is uh, 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 quite easy to find what is the frequency content in a frequency domain. But uh, in reality, we have like uh, signals that, that we don't have uh, their form, mathematical, mathematical form. For example, now uh, where I am talking, uh, it is not easy to represent uh, the, the, the voice signals as a mathematical equation, a closed form mathematical equation, because it has a lot of uncertainty. Uh, you, you don't know actually that the many of real time signals in detail so we cannot represent uh, uh, some signal from sensor like for example it is certain specific x of t for example cosine uh, uh, maybe 2 by ft times maybe e to the power minus uh, uh, j for example uh, uh, alpha t or, or whatever this is not possible in general in real signals when we have real signals we have some information once we have information it means that it has uncertainty we don't know it because if you have such signal represented by a mathematical equation it means that it is determined deterministic so uh, and we know that we have information as far as we have uncertainty if you don't have uncertainty if you know in advance what will be uh, 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 the the signal received from certain source for example then it doesn't have that source it will uh, for you at least it doesn't have any new information there is no information actually because information means that something new it, it, it is just data in that in, in that case so we are interested to deal with information which means that it has uncertainty and in that case we don't know the signal is in deterministic form how could we find the frequency domain in that case 
Okay, in that case, we, we use what is known as power spectral density. So the power spectral density, we compute the power content of uh, the signal measurement, for example. We measured some, some signal, and then we uh, uh, compute the average power for every frequency. The average power for every frequency, and this is called the power spectral density of, uh, 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 of, the, of that source of, of that signal. Okay, so you can see here, uh, this is my voice that I recorded using MATLAB. And uh, uh, after that, I use one function to calculate the power spectral density. It is also available in, uh, in, in, in Octave. Uh, so, uh, and I got uh, this, this output. So this output actually represents the power per frequency. So it is the power in dB per hertz. This is the frequency, you can see, and this is the power. Okay, so you can see that in, in my signal or in my voice, this is, for example, at uh, up to six, for example, kilohertz, sorry, up to uh, six kilohertz, you can see that we have, this is the, 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 uh, the average power for, for, for the signals with, with the frequency. So, uh, for example, if I want to compute or, or I am looking for the spectrum of my voice, which contains, let's say, 90% uh, of total energy, then we can see that, for example, up to 8 kilohertz, maybe it has 80% or 90% of the total energy. So this is very important, actually, during the design of a telephony system, for example. Uh, in telephony system, they they compute uh, this power spectral density for 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 the human in general, so for many people, and then they take the average. They found that about seventy percent of total energy in voice, they are uh, it is concentrated within uh, about three point uh, four kilohertz of the bandwidth. So even the the human voice, uh, the total uh, uh, range is about uh, eight or 9 kilohertz, but still only 3.4 kilohertz, concentrating about 70, more than 70 percent of, of, of the average uh, energy uh, of people. Okay, signal bandwidth. Signal bandwidth also is, is important uh, concept in, in, in telecommunication. We mentioned about this before, and now we repeat it again. Uh, um, I give some. I start with examples, and then we we explain it in more details. Uh, uh, every source or every information it will occupy certain uh, spectrum or certain band. This is called the bandwidth. Okay, uh, uh, in FM radio, uh, because of the FM modulation, so uh, the uh, every. Um, a channel, the FM channel, it will occupy about 100 kilohertz, okay? And uh, the, uh, in, in analog FM radio, uh, uh, according to the uh, standard regulation about the frequency, we will see that the, the spectrum is not free, actually. Even it is wireless, we feel that it is free, but it is not free. It is very, very expensive, and uh, it follows very strict regulations. And uh, now, uh, for the FM radio, uh, they decided in international standard that it will be, or it, they will allocate the frequency spectrum from 87.5 mega to 108 megahertz. So this band in the spectrum was um, uh, allocated for the usage of FM radio, analog FM radio. Which means that the total is 20.5 megahertz. Of course, when I talk about regulations here, remember that countries are different. So they might be different from country to country or from area to area about these frequencies. And uh, 20.5 megahertz is the total band. And because every channel uh, is uh, allocating about 100 kilohertz, uh, because in FM, actually, even as I said that in, in uh, voice, uh, human voice is allocated only 3 or 4 kilohertz, but for FM, they also transmit mainly for the music and high quality uh, sound. For this reason that they allocate higher band and also the FM itself, it will distribute or it, it will have like wider bandwidth than the original data, the original bandwidth. 
it is not it is not like uh, the uh, AM the AM modulation it is almost uh, the double of the original frequency or the original bandwidth but in uh, in FM it is it is it, it it can be like three times or four times because of that they uh, allocate 100 kilohertz for uh, each FM radio which well, th this means that Within this band, we will have about 200 FM channel is the total or the maximum number of FM channels that can be allocated within one area. Actually, the real number is lower than this because they keep some guard uh, band between channel to channel. Otherwise, we will have some kind of interference. Because of that, they keep some 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 guard. So, but um, in general, uh, you can allocate up to like 80 or 90 FM channel uh, within uh, one area. Okay. So, uh, um, uh, as I mentioned, that the spectrum is divided into strict to use band, so it is not free in general. Okay. Um, the wireless radio is based on the propagation of electromagnetic waves. So we have electromagnetic wave it, that it, it, it propagates in space, okay? And uh, uh, the propagation behavior, like the coverage area, the penetration ability, uh, losses in air, losses, for example, in, in inside buildings, uh, the, the, the multi-path behavior, the scattering behavior, many things related to the propagation behavior of electromagnetic waves depends on the carrier frequency. What is the carrier frequency? Uh, I'm going, of course, to talk about this in details, maybe in the next clip, but in general, that uh, when we when we send or we want to send um, uh, certain uh, information or or certain channel, we use carrier frequency. So the carrier frequency is a frequency like usually it is sinusoidal signal, which has a frequency much higher than the bandwidth of the information itself. For example, if the band if we take the AM modulation as one example you can find that in rf range maybe the channel is uh, let's say uh, uh, 2 megahertz or 3 megahertz the 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 the, the carrier uh, 3 megahertz means that 3 million hertz and the bandwidth is 10 kilohertz or 20 kilohertz so it can be the carrier can be 100 times or it can be 50 times more than the bandwidth of uh, 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 of the original signal the original signal we call it like the baseband the baseband signal is the original signal that we want to transmit the signal after modulation it, it is called band bus okay we are going to talk about this um, more uh, in, in next clip uh, so uh, the propagation behavior, as I said, depends on the carrier and also uh, it depends on the bandwidth itself. So uh, the bandwidth itself, it will, it will determine the, 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 the performance of the communication system. Also, the required uh, antenna size and the complexity of radio part of the, of the transceiver depends also on the carrier frequency and the bandwidth. Um, most of the frequencies uh, 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 up to 5 gigahertz are uh, um, or, or the most spectrum is already licensed okay and uh, the frequencies more than 5 gigahertz uh, they have many limitations in in terms of uh, like coverage area and uh, it, ha it has some problems like higher losses and so on so actually we have some problems here in the spectrum and we need always to compromise between the uh, the simplicity or, or complexity of the system and uh, uh, the cost of the radio system and the, the the coverage area the size of the antenna and many other like uh, 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 factors that we need always to compromise when we talk in uh, about wireless communication uh, in general, as you can see in this table, so we have like the medium frequency range is uh, which is mainly used for AM broadcasting from 300 kilohertz up to 3 megahertz. We have high frequency HF from uh, 3 megahertz up to 30 megahertz. And here we can see, you can see some applications for each band. Very high frequency VHF from 30 up to 300 megahertz 
uh, ultra high frequency UHF. It was this VHF and UHF in uh, before more than uh, like 15 or 20 years were uh, used a lot for uh, analog TV, but nowadays it is not used uh, anymore. Analog TV uh, disappeared almost, and you can see that UHF from 300 megahertz up to 3 gigahertz. And super high frequency from 3 gigahertz up to 30 gigahertz and extremely high frequency from 30 to 300 gigahertz. Actually, remember that also those names, actually, we have different names, other names. For, for example, for, for satellite communication, they use different uh, names for frequencies like K-band, KU-band, and uh, so on. Okay, now let us talk about filters. What are filters? Filters, uh, in in, in uh, um, as it it uh, uh, then the title or the name itself represents that um, um, how to reduce or eliminate certain parts of the signal or certain parts of the frequency of the signal, and uh, uh, the, um, either intentionally or uh, naturally, because most systems. Uh, like even natural, like, like like for example, if you have uh, a wireless cable or, or uh, a wired line, like for example this wired line, it it will have uh, by nature it will have some like uh, 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 some bandwidth. So it, it, it uh, by itself is a filter. Okay, or the filter can be designed that we design certain filter in order to eliminate the interference or or, or reduce noise in certain band. Um. Generally, we have um, four major kinds of filters. Low pass filter, as it is clear from its name, so it, it will pass the low frequencies and attenuate the higher frequencies. Most of natural uh, uh, filters are uh, low pass filter, like cables, for example, and so on. most of them, they are, they are low pass uh, filters. And band pass filter, is a filter that it will pass certain band and eliminate or reduce the bands outside that certain band. It is called band bus filter. High bus filter, also to, as, as it, from its name, it will pass the frequencies which is higher than certain frequency and suppress the low frequencies. And then we have the band reject filter. The band reject filter, it will pass all frequencies except certain band. For example, in medical devices, uh, uh, for let's say for for measuring uh, 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 heart signals, for example, then we need to make like band reject filter to remove 50 hertz or 60 hertz of frequencies, uh, which is the the source because the, the interference from 50 hertz or 60 hertz will be high, and it can like interfere with the signal with the like vital signal of a human or of the body, then we need to use very high rejected filter to remove such bands. This is the idea filter in frequency domain, as you can see. So we have this is the low pass filter. So you can see that we 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 pass this the from zero DC up to FM. This is the maximum filter that we can pass. This negative side we will talk about this when we talk about uh, analog uh, uh, like modulation or uh, amplitude modulation. Uh, this is just the, the mirror. We don't have frequency, negative frequency, but this is the mirror which appear when we make the modulation. Okay. Then we have uh, the the uh, uh, band bus filter, and you can see that the band bus the, the 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 signal is passed within from the lower frequency to certain higher frequency, and high bus is fr from certain like lower frequency and uh, to 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 infinity. Okay. And uh, uh, here I, uh, we bought the, the low bus filter, how the, the mathematical form of the low bus filter, the mathematical form of the band bus filter. So you can see that this is the filter. This is the idea filter, by the way, those the, the function, the transfer function of the idea filter. Okay. And I left here for you that what is the uh, high pass filter uh, transfer function. So you should be able to do it based on these two. Okay. Um,
I want j just to say one thing here because um, if you remember uh, we we had such pulse in time and we saw that in time when we have pulse then we have infinitely like duration a frequency domain and it is the same here so we when have we when we have like limited frequency uh, uh, signal with a limited frequency like if um, a signal ended exactly at fm so after fm the signal content is zero in that case we will need a signal in time which is which has infinitely duration in time domain okay in order to have a signal like limited highly limited in frequency domain the, the, we come to this later when we talk about like some problems in digital communication when we talk about intersymbol interference okay uh, now I talk about certain paradox in in in, in wireless communication. So uh, uh, usually, if usually we are interested, especially in digital communication, when we talk about your mobile phone, you want to be to to have like very high data rate. You want to be able to to, for example, download some big files within uh, a few minutes or a few seconds. So usually, it is highly uh, desirable to have high information rate you are looking for you have uh, at, at your home for example um, uh, 8k tv very big screen uh, tv you want to have very high quality picture and and video so in that case you will need very high information rate or data rate okay uh, is that easy uh, actually, we have paradox here. So you can see that a high information rate require wide bandwidth because uh, I mentioned this even in clip one. If you want to send more information, you will need in general higher bandwidth or wider bandwidth. Okay. Uh, wide bandwidth means also channel problems. Like we, we we will see them when we talk about wireless channels, about frequency selective fading. Those things will be um, we will talk about them later. Yeah, when we build more background or more knowledge in this uh, uh, in the, in this course. Uh, but to get wider bandwidth, we need, as I said, we will said uh, uh, as uh, has been said that we will need high carrier uh, signal frequency. In the previous slides, we said that uh, uh, the carrier frequency, usually it can be like 20 times or 30 times more than the bandwidth. Okay, so very wide bandwidth, it will need very high like carrier frequency. Uh, and uh, very high carrier frequency, for example, if it is more than 5 gigahertz, it means that we will have limitation in the propagation coverage we will have other problems like high uh, high doppler uh, frequency fading as we will see them later okay so uh, most current uh, radio systems are crowded in the uhf range okay and the problem here that most uhf spectrum is licensed so uh, you cannot just come to certain band and you build your communic wireless communication system because you need to go to contact the regulation in your country and you ask them, can I use, for example, uh, this frequency of uh, 700 megahertz and I need bandwidth of 20 megahertz? So most likely they will say no because most of these frequencies are already licensed to other, uh, to other systems and some systems actually or some uh, um, like companies, they paid a lot to use that uh, uh, that frequency bands, as with some like cellular phones, um, I heard that in, 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 uh, it was in 3G system. Some company paid like 20 billion or something like that dollar for to to get the full license of the band of the 3G system, cellular system. So it is not free that you use any frequency that you want. Okay, and most frequencies are licensed either either for for governmental use, for example in uh, uh, military applications, for radio systems, for navigation, for cellular phones, for uh, broadcast uh, channels, for m many many kind of applications. So uh, it is not easy to get a frequency. Okay. Uh, the spectrum, as I said, that less than five gigahertz is 
scarce so it is it, it, it is rare to get free resources in the spectrum this is in wireless communication except for the ism we will come what we, what we mean by the ism okay um as we said that the spectrum is already you need always to get a license or permission to use uh, the spectrum okay and uh, uh, then we have uh, like three kinds of spectrum either license spectrum okay it is called it is most of the UHF band and then we have shared spectrum the shared spectrum is the only part which is left free so you can use without license so it is license free spectrum okay it was left in purpose by the government uh, uh, usage so for example 2.4 gigahertz that we use for bluetooth it is a free license uh, spectrum okay so this spectrum is called ism bands industrial scientific and medical bands why they left these ISM bands? It is not because they are generous, actually. The, the main reason, because we have many, like, equipments, they can generate a lot of interference in those bands. Now, one example is the microwave oven. Uh, some kinds of microwave oven, it can work over frequency of 2.45 uh, gigahertz, and it can generate a lot of noise and interference, so it is not possible to license this band for some, and sell it to some, like, reliable application, because we will have this interference there. So we have some bands which will, uh, we have some, like, equipments, which by nature it will generate a lot of noise in that bands. Because of that, those bands called ISM, and they are license-free. So you can use. But also there, there is a regulation to use. It is license-free, so anyone can use it, but every, uh, 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 um, uh, he or she should follow the regulations. For example, there is maximum power that it should be used because it is shared by... Um, all people, they or all companies, they can use it. So they should, should they they should, they should be uh, they should work in collaborative way, not one just send with high power and then a block for the other usage of the same band. So this is actually very tricky how to use this shared spectrum, and it is very very important. Many many systems working in this ISM band. One I I just uh, uh, count few of them, Bluetooth, Zigbee. Uh, Wi-Fi, um, many other uh, like systems like uh, long-range one, uh, 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 Sigfox system, a lot of systems they are using this ISM bands, but because it is free, so uh, there is no guarantee for for the quality in in these bands. Of course, now with this advanced techniques of uh, modulation, demodulation, interference cancellation, antennas beam forming, we have a lot of technologies that it makes it like like possible to use this free bands by many by many services. Okay, and finally we have unlicensed spectrum. It means that they are not license free. It is free till now, actually, but still you need to take a regulation, uh, the, a permission from regulation, because it, it has not been licensed yet, but but it is expected that it it uh, it, it will be licensed in future. So uh, most of the millimeter waves, uh, for example, above 50 gigahertz, most of that band is not licensed yet, but but uh, it doesn't mean that it is free for use for usage just you you, you install your system uh, most of countries they they put condition that you you need to have like um, uh, permission from the regulator to to, to use those uh, unlicensed spectrum okay okay we mentioned about this thanks Yes, I, as I said, that this ISM band, it is very useful, especially with low power, low range, or, or short distance uh, applications. Uh, I just give some of these bands here, but uh, not all of them. 
uh, here, for example, in US, it, it is from 902 to 928 MHz, so it, it, about 26 megahertz is is free. But this band, I think, it is not available in Europe. Uh, in Europe, they have another eight, uh, uh, around 800 megahertz. They have this free band. So this band is used for cordless phones, for example, microwave ovens, some microwave ovens using this, this band and uh, industrial heaters. Uh, so, uh, but this band is available so it can be used uh, by other systems. And one of the systems that um, uh, they suggested to use it is called like, like long, long range uh, one. So they, uh, in US, they use also this band uh, for long range uh, uh, communication. Uh, it is mainly used for uh, devices and for Internet of Things application. Um, uh, we will have one part to talk about these technologies. Uh, the most famous uh, frequency ISM band is from 2.4 to 2.4 H35 gigahertz. So we ca you can see that the Bluetooth, for example, 100, uh, the maximum power is 100 milliwatt. Also, we have the Wi-Fi, not only BNG, actually, we have also other uh, 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 other band, uh, brands of Wi-Fi. We will talk about this in details also in another part of in this course. And the power can be up to one watt. And uh, we have around 5 gigahertz, also some free bands like this band, and also Wi-Fi, some Wi-Fi application they use uh, this band. Uh, uh, around 60 gigahertz also, we have from 57 to 64 gigahertz, is, it was also uh, left as, as ISM. Uh, radio uh, band. It is license-free band because the absorption uh, in in uh, in uh, water or in uh, vapor in this in this frequency is very very high. So it is not useful for for long-range uh, applications. So it was also left uh, like free band. So we have actually many uh, different uh, like uh, um, ISM radio bands that can be used by for free. But they are not that much, and as I said, many systems and applications, they can use the same band. So in many cases, those applications uh, like uh, face uh, real challenges actually to work. I should say that, uh, for example, in this low range one, uh, which uses also this, this band, uh, one of the limitations they done for the IoT that it should be it shouldn't send per device in the uplink it shouldn't send more than thirty seconds per hour and even in this case when you have like tens of thousands of devices distributed in large area uh, uh, they can face a lot a lot of of, of blocking and and also like uh, 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 failure in, in in the delivery of uh, of of packets, and when that one packet uh, like failed to be delivered, then they will ask for retransmission, and this will introduce a lot of latency and delay. So there are a lot of challenges here, but still there is also um, uh, or there are actually a lot of uh, uh, of successful stories also like simply the Bluetooth that we have in our phones. It is based on, on the application in this 2.4 uh, gigahertz. Modulation process. Uh, once you have the signal in baseband, the original signal, you have it in baseband, you cannot just connect it to the antenna. For example, if I have my microphone and I want to send like this my message now over air, it is not possible to just connect this microphone to the antenna. And we need to have what is named as modulation. So I uh, 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 like make this signal proper for the transmission. So it needs the process of modulation to make the signal uh, like like uh, uh, proper for the um, channel media or the certain media. Of course, it is different. If I want to send this message over wireline, coaxial cable, uh, telephone uh, like bare uh, line, wire line, uh, wireless. And in the wireless case, the antenna size and how many other people they are using the same also like like voice they want to send uh, with me in the same in the same uh, area. So there are many questions uh, which uh, like uh, we need to address in order to find the optimum modulation method. But always we need to modulate the signal. We cannot just transmit the signal in its baseband.
uh, once it is modulated, we call the signal as band bus. So the band bus signal is the signal after modulation. What is the main concept of modulation? The modulation process must be like a reversible process because once I made the modulation and in the receiver I need to make the demodulation in order to receive uh, the transmitted signal. Okay, and um, let us take this example to see the impact of transmitted signal without uh, uh, modulation only on the antenna size. So the antenna size we will see it later, should be uh, around lambda over 2. What is lambda? Lambda is the wavelength. So what is wavelength? The wavelength is the distance which the, the wave will transfer uh, uh, during it is minimum periodic time. So if you have sinusoidal signal, you remember that the minimum t period uh, T, that this is the time, which is the, the minimum time required for the signal to repeat itself. So now we use a carrier. The carrier is sinusoidal signal because it is a stem signal which has only uh, like a single frequency with, with, with zero bandwidth. So this signal is used for usually for, for modulation. Okay, so this carrier frequency usually is called uh, the, the, the frequency, the, this is the time t. Okay, now um, uh, for any signal, if we know that signal, that signal has certain frequency, based on that frequency we can compute the wavelength. The wavelength is the distance this signal will uh, like 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 transfer or or will move uh, during it is periodic time or this time. Okay, uh, so the 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 minimum periodic uh, 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 time is one divided by the uh, the maximum frequency in that in that signal. Okay, now if we take voice signal. So the voice signal, the maximum frequency, if we assume that it is around 10 kilohertz, as I said, that it is, it is slightly less, but if we assume that it is 10 kilohertz, that this is the maximum signal or the maximum frequency in the voice band that we want to transmit over a, a wireless channel. And then lambda, lambda is the, the, the distance because we know that the, the electromagnetic wave will transfer transfer or will move with the speed of light and then the, this distance will be c0 is the speed of light divided by f maximum okay so if maximum is 10 kilohertz the speed of light is 3 times 10 of the power 8 meter per second and if you make this computation you will get 30 kilometer so you know that uh, um, in order if you want to connect this microphone, that uh, signal directly after amplification to the antenna directly, so to get efficient uh, uh, transmission, the antenna length should be at least 15 kilometer. So you can see only, this is only from one side, only from the antenna side. There are many other sides makes the modulation process is a crucial or is like very, very important for wireless communication. So it is not possible to just transmit the signal and it is uh, like a, a baseband. So what is the what are the major conditions of modulation process? It should be a reversible or reversible uh, 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 process actually. It should be a reversible process, not not a reversible. It should be a reversible process because one, once it is uh, the, um, you have the modulation, then you can have the demodulation process. So uh, uh, and it shouldn't change the original signal in its shape. So we should we should keep the original signal shape and also uh, frequency as much as possible okay and uh, uh, it shouldn't use too much bandwidth than required by the original signal uh, information as i said the, the spectrum usually is, uh, is 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 rare is very important we need to preserve the, sp the spectrum so always we need to use the minimum possible spectrum of course there are some like uh, 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 some uh, cases where we use higher spectrum than needed because we want to get other benefits. For example, to mitigate some of the channel problems like, like, like fading or like intersymbol interference or because to make the signal possible that we send many, many signals over each other so we have reason to use like extended uh, bandwidth. Otherwise, 
it is it is uh, uh, important to use the minimum possible bandwidth for transmission so we need to increase the spectrum efficiency it is very crucial in digital communication or in communication in general to increase the spectrum efficiency and finally the modulation process should be technically simple and efficient uh, in terms of required power so we don't need to use some modulation technique or demodulation techniques that needs a lot to, to use a lot of power because uh, usually the end user uh, the device has limited power and nowadays our make uh, our mobile phones uh, even from algorithmic point of view from um, like computing point of view they are very powerful but still they are working over limited battery so uh, it is not it is not wise to use some algorithm that it will uh, it will draw a lot of energy from the battery uh, uh, in order to work so we need to minimize the usage uh, power as well so uh, um, uh, to minimize any unnecessary bandwidth uh, uh, which is of course the best signal that could be used for modulating signal of course you can answer this directly now you know, we, we, uh, you know that uh, sinusoidal signal is the only signal which has zero bandwidth. It is only direct delta at the, the carrier frequency, but itself it doesn't like contribute in the bandwidth. Okay, so the sinusoidal signal for sure that it will be the best signal that it is used for for modulation. Okay, and you can see this is the generally the the, the general sinusoidal signal. Okay, you can see that this signal, it has how many parameters you can see here, which express the signal. Yes, three is the amplitude. This is the amplitude of the sinusoid signal of the cosine. This is the frequency of the cosine. And this is the phase of the, this cosine signal. Okay, the sine signal actually is the same as cosine, but shifted by 90 degrees. Okay, now uh, uh, if I want to make modulation, modulation process is the augmentation of our information in one of these three parameters or any of them. It, uh, what I mean, if I carry our information or if, if I put my information within the signal amplitude, then we have amplitude modulation. If I, I involve uh, the information signal within the frequency. So the frequency of the signal it will not be any more fixed of the sinusoidal, but it will change the frequency according to the information. In that case, we will have a frequency modulation. It's quite easy, you can see. And if we have the information in the face, in this face, so what we will have, we will have face modulation. So it is like simple like that. So amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and phase modulation. Actually, we can also use like two of them, not only one of them. For example, in digital communication, we sometimes in some application, we, we, we like uh, augment or we put our information or symbols in the amplitude and in the phase. So we distribute our signal between amplitude and phase. This is called quadrature amplitude modulation. It is called a QAM. Okay, may, I'm sure that you 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 may saw this term somehow in 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 your, for example, Wi-Fi system or so. A QAM it means that quadrature amplitude modulation. It is phase and amplitude, both of them. They are used to carry information. How they are used. And how to put this? Uh, we will start, of course, with ambl with analog, with simple case, and we talk about channels for digital communication and how it works. This will be in part two, but now we are still in part one, and there's also more clips in part one. Uh, we finish them first to understand those very important fundamentals in uh, wireless or in telecommunication in general. Uh, that's all for for this clip, and see you in the third clip. Thank you very much and see you later.